I try to meet most of you when you're coming in. If we didn't get to connect and see some of you that I didn't get to introduce myself to, um, let's be sure and just chat at the end. I love hearing the stories of people who come to work with me and what got them interested in what we're talking about tonight. Um, I'm the Crossroads Coach. Um, I am a certified, certified by the ICF, which is the International Coach Federation. I'm a certified associate coach. Um, that means that I went through a, a training program to become a coach. I launched this business three years ago. So I'm an entrepreneur, just like probably most of you, if not all of you. Um, before I became a coach, I had about a 12, 13 year career in marketing, um, most of which was in New York City. And I went through a career transition and I became a coach. I'm a small business owner for all of the scariness that that includes and all the excitement too. Um, so it's actually pretty cool that I have to come and speak with you tonight. Um, I work with private clients, so I work with individuals who are looking to develop within career paths that they've chosen, so a career development coach. I also talk about career tra transitions, so a lot of the folks who show up to coach with me are thinking about doing something pretty different and trying to figure out how to do it or sometimes figure out exactly what it is that they want to do. Um, I also am doing more work with organizations and companies now around leadership development. Um, so helping you to be the best leader that you can be. And that's really the angle that I'm thinking about tonight in working with entrepreneurs and how I can help you to be the entrepreneurs that, you know, the best that you can be in whatever you hope to be doing. So um, it's a great opening question, what is an entrepreneur, right? When you show up and you self-identify as an entrepreneur, what, what does that mean? Anyone, I know the fries are good. <laughs> Plain and simple, you own and operate your own business, right? That's it, right? As soon as you make that decision, you are officially an entrepreneur. There's a lot, I was looking at some of the definitions of it, online as well, and there's a lot of mention of the risk, right? It's like inherent in being an entrepreneur that you're adopting, you know, a higher level of risk. But essentially, it's about owning and operating your own business. Um, so tonight, we're going to talk about how you can be the best entrepreneurs that you have it in you to be. And the goal setting and time management is part of that. And we're going to look at some of the characteristics and skills that will make you the best that you can be and talk about development plans. And what I want to do is make the beginning interactive and then flip over to doing smaller groups so that you guys have the opportunity to work with each other and come up with some of these developmental plans together. Because that's what I do with my clients. I don't show up and say, here's how you have to be the best leader. Here's how you need to communicate. Here's how you have to manage your time. It all starts with your sense of what the ideal is and bringing that out in you. And so those developmental plans you know, for, for being your best leader, it, it comes from you, it doesn't come from me. Um, so, I am curious what you think are the attributes of an ideal entrepreneur. And I'll triple them on the board. A risk taker? A risk taker? Oh. It's not going to work well, is it? It can be skills, it can be knowledge, it can be attributes, how you conduct yourself. Ah, they got better markers over here. Let's try that. Resourceful. Resourceful. Ah, better. Self starter. Passionate. <sighs> <laughs> Independent. Insightful. Okay. How about skills? These are definitely a lot of characteristics. Let's mix in some skills and knowledge. Good communicator. Good communicator.
business savvy. Okay. <coughs> and how about some of those sort of day-to-day -day skills? What does it take to run run a business, manage people? Influence or sell ideas internally. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> you need good Excel skills. <laughs> you, need, you need to be able to, um, you know, manipulate the software um, that's out there in order to um, create a create a vision for what you want inside your head and be able to put it out there. Mm. I don't know what that's called. Sounds like a well. It sounds like a a translation that. Well, you also need to have knowledge, right? I mean, knowledge about one of the guys who spoke at the one of the entrepreneurship meetings. Um, uh, I mean, he just went through ten different websites that he uses in order to never lose a customer, and just that knowledge of I never even heard about those companies. Mm -hmm. So knowledge about sounds like resources yeah. and tools, tools of what's up, right? Best practices. Ah, uh, best practices too, right? And that's very specific, right, to, to what you're doing. Oops. All right, and I'm going to add some too because time management is on the bill, so I'm going to throw some of that in. What do you What do you think makes a good time manager? How do you know whether you're doing a good job of managing your time or not? What sectors? I was just going to say able to prioritize. Prioritizing. She keeps taking mine. <laughs> What's that? I'm just teasing. Chris keeps taking mine. He yelled passion at you. I'll try delegating. Taking other people's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to add a couple more. Decisive. Mm -hmm. Goal setting and achieving those actual goals. Yeah. So we'll say goal setting and follow through, right? Or implementation, maybe. OK. So take a minute and think about your strengths and what you would call opportunities for growth. I'm not going to call it a weakness, right? Everything is an opportunity. So think about. Think about one or two. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a show of hands. We're just going to pick two and work through what a plan might look like together. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity to continue to work through more closely with some of the folks at this table. Okay. So let's talk. Let's let's say focus on an area that you think you would like to improve upon, right? That there would be significant benefits to you as an entrepreneur, to you as a leader, and therefore to your organization if you could improve in this area. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to raise your hand with the one or two that resonate the most. Does that make sense? Risk taking. Resourcefulness. <coughs> Got a resourceful room, huh? Self-starters, I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> Passionate? Just checking. Independent? Yeah. Insightful? It's a good one. How do you feel about the way you communicate? Is it an area of development? Okay. Business savvy? Selling skills. You can always work on that. You can always work on those, right? <laughs> Knowledge within your industry. Okay. Best practices. Prioritizing. Okay. 
delegating? Depends on having a business big enough to delegate to, right? I got no one. <laughs> Decisiveness, making decisions, sticking with them. Okay. Goal setting. It was in the headline, right? <laughs> <laughs> and how about follow through? Okay. Maybe, so, maybe later. So listen, we're all we're all works in progress, right? No. We could all stand to learn from each other. Like, what do you do? How do you, you know, how do you prioritize, right? What are some, what are some tips that you have? Um, so there's an opportunity here, when when we break you out, to share some of those tips. Like, this is these are some areas that I get stuck, right? But I think that, I think that talking about how we set goals. Um, kind of a toss up around communication and prioritizing. Who's talking about communication? Area of opportunity. Or cast the vote. I don't know. Which one seems more useful or kind of evenly divided. Prior let's be prioritizing. And you're all gonna take my card and be like, hey I'm still hung up on this thing. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about um, goal setting. When we look at development plans, right, the question is how do we how do we develop in an area that we feel like we're underdeveloped in? Right? What would a developmental plan look like for goal setting? How do you how do you try out different things, right? Does anyone have a suggestion for how they start setting goals? I'm curious where you get started and where you get stuck. Open day. Any example? Yeah. I, mean, I just finished reading the Happiness Project, and she divides it up into uh, tasks that you have to check off every single day. And so, if there's something that you actually want to get done, she encourages you to make a chart of all everything that would um, lead you towards that goal, and then you have to check it off every single day. And so, when at the end of the month, you can look and see how many checks you have, as opposed to just letting up, having it become this ambiguous thing and then all of a sudden have eight months go by and you really have no idea whether or not you accomplished it. So what's the benefit of the check marks? Uh, the benefit is to make sure that you're being held accountable to yourself, especially if you're a self-employed. Okay. Or a uh, self-employed. Checkbox to me also sounded like, a, you know, sort of building a history of success, right? You've seen what you're doing, just in case you feel like you're not moving. Um, Many of my, my many of my clients are challenged to set goals. It feels like there's a lot, you know, there's so much to do. How do yeah. I how do I get started, right? So, I'm gonna raise this. It's very helpful to start with a vision further out into the future, right? Sometimes we get so we just get so stuck on what our next step is supposed to be that we lose sight of the big picture, or we're so focused on the big picture that we can't figure out the next step, right? So, how many of you would say your goal feels like a mountain peak that you have to climb <laughs> all the way over there, right? Actually, I, put, I coined this vital. I was kind of proud of myself for coming up with a cool acronym. V is the vision, okay? When I start working with clients that are having trouble setting goals, I ask them to create that vision, right? And maybe it's a year out, maybe it's five years out. Wherever your mind goes when you're thinking about all that you want to do, go there first, right? Vision, envision where you want to be. I like a year out, right? It's like it's enough time to accomplish a lot. It, it tends to be how we think in the business world, like what I need to do. It's January. Here's where I need to be by this time next year. So B is the vision, right? And then I want you to start imagining the journey. Right? The benefit of starting here and having you picture yourself here is that you're not going to get stuck telling me 
about all the speed bumps and the hurdles in the road, right? The fallen trees and whatever, right? I want you to start here and I actually tell my clients to be there. I don't know, if, did any of you ever do visualization? It's worth trying. If Not call, professional. If you call me, I will make you do it. <laughs> be here, okay? So it's, it's hard, but be in this moment, be here where you have accomplished what you already want to accomplish, okay? Then imagine the journey to get there, okay? Because from here, you are going to translate. Oops, that is a lie. <laughs> <coughs> T is translation, okay? I want you to translate this into a goal, right? Where are you a year from now? And I want you to trans translate this into strategies. Okay. It's just alphabet everywhere. Okay. So by envisioning this is the end game and this is your journey, okay, you've translated that into a goal. And you're starting to articulate strategies. Okay? So, I'll use myself as an example, because I know mine best. I want to be a successful coach, right? A year from now, I am coaching with this many clients, I am giving speaking engagements, I'm, I'm making six figures, right? I can see myself there. I've imagined this journey, right? And when I Translate that into goals, you know, maybe there's a money goal, maybe there's a certain number of clients, right? I'm sure your business goals start to look like that, right? Very specific. And then you get into strategies. Well, guess what? My strategies, coach, speak, and write. I'm doing those three things, I'm on my way, okay? And L, is about leading yourself forward with one step, okay? You know how it is when you jump over stones, you're trying to get to the far side of the river and the view changes every time you take a step? So much of setting goals is actually this openness to how the path might change as you go. So there's a constant reevaluation, but this is what gets you attached to it, right? Like this is this is the why, this is the how, okay? And then take a step, take a step, leading yourself forward, right? Does that make sense? But start here, and that's how you you validate this stuff, right? Like, you know, how do you know if you're on a path that makes sense? Is this going to get me there? Okay? So it's something that you can try. Start with the visualization. Okay? Um, trying to think if I... Uh, I'll just leave that for now. So, I'm curious where you get stuck in your goal planning. You all raised your hand and said it'd be really helpful to talk about how we set goals. Not setting goals, or not, <laughs> not or not having a vision, I guess. Like, um, I mean, I'm not actually doing a startup now, but when I had one, I guess I had a vision then. But when you're not doing a startup, it's hard. I think it's harder to have a vision of what you're doing beyond what you're doing, like this week or this month, or you know, for your client or whatever. Okay. There's also, I guess, I'm not sure. I've this, but it's the too big problem. I mean, it's one thing to have goals that are the next step, the next rung right. up in job title or something, but to, to create a startup, there are so many different parts that have to come together. Sure. So what, what does that vision look like? IBM, you know? I mean, you have vision, I will have founded IBM. Well, it's just, it just makes your cerebral cortex pop. <laughs> Because there's so much to it, it's it's a it's such a big goal in a way with so sure. many depend so many dependent parts. 
and the, and the need for help from so many other people that it, it, it's overwhelming. So, which, is, which is part yeah. of why entrepreneurs are such amazing people because they, through, through, through skill and, and delusion, <laughs> they, they're willing to tackle that. Kind well, of, how does it get done? <clears throat> right? You know, I have clients who, you know, they, not some, I mean, they all dream big, right? You don't really sign up to work with a career coach if you don't believe that it's possible, right? So when you talk about, hey, I, you know, I, I want to be IBM someday, I want to know how it starts, right? There's so much power that comes from just getting started. That's why this, this little L is so important, right? Because we get overwhelmed. Right? We get overwhelmed, like, you know, sometimes we think too small about what we're capable of, and sometimes we think so big we don't know where to start, right? And we just completely get paralyzed. And taking one step and looking around and taking another step, what happens is that momentum keeps going, right? So developmental plans, wherever someone is trying to go, we are always just trying to figure out the very next step that you could take. Right? One thing that you could try to do differently that you've always had it in your mind, maybe I'll give this a try. You know, I keep sort of showing up with this behavior, but I always wondered what would be different. It's the daring yourself to change one thing or try one thing. Right? So I wonder how do big companies start? Right? How do they start, right? How do they start? Yeah. As small companies. What's that? As small companies. Okay. But probably as small companies with an identified customer, a need that they can fill. Okay. But that changes and evolves. I mean, because they learn. Because they learn. Because they learn. Okay. Hewlett Packard but started with a single circuit. What's that? Hewlett Packard started with a single circuit. <coughs> it, 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 it made a pure tone. And that was what they had that was special. So I want to, I love that you said but, because the buts, the yeah buts, they come so fast when we're dreaming, right? And I, call, I think they called them the yeah buts in, uh, it's either the Pathfinder or what color is your parachute, the yeah buts, right? This is, this is about dreaming without the yeah buts, right? Brad, if you want to own an IBM one day, I just want to know, where does it start? It starts with a small company, Mike had a quick answer. How do small companies get founded? They get founded with a need, right? How do you, how do you uncover a need? Well, you know, I've, I've been aware of this need, or I want to do research, or I'm interested in this particular, you know, medical space. I was talking to Tim, right? Like, what's your next move? I'm going to research my idea. What do you do with it? What do you do when you have a great idea? Real question, not rhetorical. <laughs> you had a great idea, what would your next move be? I find people to talk to about it to find out if it's really a great idea. Test it. Yeah. yeah. You see those little L's? I'm not going to hold you to this, right? I, I know you want to climb a mountain, and your vision may change, right? And you might end up, you know, going over here, Mount Cam's over this way instead, right? But look at what you've gained, right? When you're here, the world looks different. You're so much smarter. You're so much more self-aware, right? You're moving. Yeah, Bob. Well, so I'm I'm, I'm not happy about this uh, road with a bunch of little elves following each other. <laughs> okay. You know, you got a lot of things you got to get done, and, and and it's possible that to some extent, doesn't matter which which order you do some of them. In. So you just pick whichever. You wake up one day and you say, hey, I'm going to tackle this. I I know I got you know ten problems. Let me tackle this one. So I spent the last two days at a hackathon. I built two pieces of software that I know my product needs. It wasn't what I was planning on doing three days ago. Okay. But they are key building blocks and along the way. So what's your insight from that experience? So, so, so you, you take a bunch of steps, and then you see where you are. Well, it, it, it's actually your point. You take a few steps, you see where you are, you figure out a few more steps that need to get done. Thank you. Wait, are you agreeing or disagreeing? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. It's a green couch that's disagreeing. Yeah, well, which was it? Aggressive agree. Which was it? <laughs> <laughs> I violently agree. But, but, but what's your insight? What's your insight from well, the last couple of days? Point one, take action. Yep. 
take, take useful action. Know, mm -hmm. know that the actions you're taking are key to the story. Yep. Listen, we don't all struggle with every part of this, right? Some of you don't struggle at all. Some of you didn't raise your hand for goal setting, right? Mine is, my role is not to say, this is the only way to do it. Mine is to offer new possibilities for exploring things that you know you want to do, right? We get stuck in different places. Some people get stuck on the action part, right? Some people take lots of action and they don't actually know where they're trying to go or what end, you know, to what end, right? So this is just a way of thinking about it and like harnessing it a little bit, right? I, I, I work with a lot of really successful people who have no idea why they've been working so hard at what they've been working at because it's not, it's not in alignment, right? So that's when it's going to be really helpful to step back and do the visioning exercise, okay? So this is about one next step. If you feel stuck in setting your goals, here's a new possibility. Did someone else raise a hand? Or? Okay. You said it was not in alignment, alignment with what? Their values, their oh. life purpose. So prioritization fits very nicely into this and, and Bob's segue, right? How do I know what to do next? How do I get out of that spin? I get that, you know, I get that a lot, right? Coach, speak, right? There's so many things that I can do as a coach. I don't even know which one I'm supposed to do first, right? And then how do you, med you know, how do you check those against all the other things that you have to do in life, right? So I do a lot of values work with my clients and as entrepreneurs, it's a fascinating conversation. Why, you know, why is it important to you to do this? In the grand scheme of your life, right? it's a huge question to ask people, and I don't ask it right out of the gate, but really, what's your life purpose? Have you thought about it? We come right out of school, we start working, it's about you know, <laughs> making some money and becoming independent, and we don't necessarily ask the question, but that's one of those bigger questions that helps inform the goal setting.